I swear I'm not crazy. I'm stressed. I'm not a sad person who isolates herself from the world. I know others like that. I'm simply stressed. Forgive me. I have no idea why I'm crying. As I close the door behind me, the tears run down her face. That day, I remember looking down at the paper chart in front of me and seeing chief complaint, stressed times three days. This patient had visited the clinic four times in the last two months with a similar chief complaint. For patient privacy, we'll name her Valentina. She is undocumented, a cash patient with emergency Medi-Cal. She is in her mid thirties, short and overweight, pre-diabetic with high blood pressure. She grew up in Sinaloa, Mexico, has a ninth grade education. As a child, her father died of cirrhosis, leaving her to sell shoes on the dangerous streets of Sinaloa to support her family. She left Mexico to escape the ever increasing bloodshed caused by the gang violence. She's been living with a family she met crossing the El Paso Mexican border without any intentions of returning to Mexico. She's been working long hours, six out of the seven days of the week, 12 to 18 hours a day to send money to her family in Mexico. This visit, she was hoping for a B12 injection in another round of muscle relaxers to help her relax and sleep better. When asked if she wanted to see a therapist or do more to manage her stress, she became enraged that a therapist was suggested. How dare you mention therapy? God is my only healer. Where does Valentina live? She lives in South LA, a neighborhood of hardworking individuals from the taquero feeding USC students to the janitors who kept our city clean with the 19 pandemic. The residents of South LA keep our city running. 42% Employed South LA residents work in three essential industries, retail, manufacturing, and transportation. These are hard workers, but the system is beating them down financially. This area has the lowest medium household income at $36,400, and it has the highest percentage of folks living below the federal poverty level in LA County. Then the pandemic came in 20, and while many others were able to adapt to work at home jobs, many of these individuals kept working person as they kept the city running, but at the cost of their own health. The three industries, manufacturing and transportation, were the industries with the most COVID cases in LA County. South LA's workforce was uniquely vulnerable to COVID infection and its commensurate health and economic cost. In addition, some may have experienced adverse childhood experiences and must in their lives in their home country or here in the U.S. This could range from different abuse from violence, discrimination, and even poverty, which are more common in those socioeconomic and minorities. Adverse events can rewire the brain and response to stress, which can result with issues related to emotional regulation, such as anxiety, depression, PTSD, and use disorders. Other studies have noted social isolation and low levels of social support, which may further exacerbate the risk for poor mental health. Add this to the surgeon and deaths, the stresses of poverty, and you can only start to imagine the effect this all had on the mental health community. Yet, through all of this, they kept our city running. I want you to remember residents and their voices. Remember what they do for their families, their communities, their city. Do for us. How they are what makes LA a wonderful place to live. And remember how we to them to give them all the tools they need to take care of their mental health. So, we help Valentina. As we walked through the streets of South LA and spoke to residents to gather information for a needs assessment, we discovered that there was a vast need for mental health services. In Valentina's community, mental health resources are limited with only few individuals aware of resource availability. Many in our community are impoverished, they cannot afford health care, and even if care were available, they are simply too busy working to access it. These factors, barriers are also complicated by the lack of mental health education and stigma of mental health within her community that prevents individuals from accessing treatment. Some of the community members that we spoke with were reluctant to seek care because they did not think they had a mental health problem, they did not think they need medication or therapy, or because they are afraid of what others will think if they found out. In the Hispanic Latinx community, there's a familiar phrase that goes like this, la ropa sucia se lava en casa, in other words, don't air your dirty laundry in public. Due to these cultural beliefs, some individuals do not seek 
treatment for mental illness as it is considered to be taboo or out of fear of being labeled as locals, crazy, or bringing shame or unwanted attention to their families. When mental health is not commonly or openly talked about, this can cause one to feel uncomfortable with different types of therapies and psychiatric medication. What contributed to Valentina's state of mental health and what are other therapies we can offer her and her community? County data shows that in our area of interest, residents are disproportionately afflicted by structural inequalities like racism, mass incarceration, and economic difficulties, as well as chronic medical conditions like hypertension, heart disease, and diabetes, all of which contribute to high psychological distress. Yet, as previously mentioned, there are many barriers to accessing mental health. So what can we offer these people, like Valentina, that is cheap, accessible, and beneficial? Well, that's mindfulness. Research supports the benefits of mindfulness-based interventions for improving physical and mental well-being, but it also shows lower engagement in mindfulness practices among people of color and low-income communities. This lower engagement is what our group wanted to target. How can we raise awareness of mindfulness in this community that is disproportionately afflicted by debilitating social determinants of health? We begin by acknowledging that mindfulness is not the answer, but rather a powerful tool. We must also not assume that mindfulness is right for everyone, as it can exacerbate symptoms of traumatic stress if not done in a trauma-informed way. For example, unsolicited touch in the form of physical adjustments during sessions and assuming everyone is comfortable and safe closing their eyes. With this goal in mind, of, with this goal of raising mindfulness awareness, we decided to partner with a community-based organization who is already helping address health barriers in the South LA community. This organization is Tena Health a health organization that hosts monthly health fairs at South LA Cafe, a bustling community center, and a place to get a savory cup of coffee. The intention of this uh, health fair is to create a bridge to healthcare for those residents who might be hesitant to see a doctor at a clinic, but feel more comfortable stopping by a health fair for a blood pressure check. It also serves those patients who are not comfortable asking their healthcare provider questions about medications as they encourage residents to bring in all, their, all of their medications so the team members can go over what their medications are for and any concerns they have. This strategy hopes to empower residents to know what they are taking and why. This health fair serves as a safe, free place where community members can learn more about their health, ask questions while maintaining anonymity anonymity and confidentiality. Now that we had a goal in mind and an organization to partner with, our next question was, is this something that this community would be willing to try? We ventured to South Los Angeles to find out. We created a needs assessment in both English and Spanish to determine what health concerns were present in Valentina's community. The paper surveys were distributed at a local health fair event and handed to neighborhood residents on the streets. A total of 31 surveys were collected, uh, which showed a strong interest in learning more about mindfulness and meditation. We consulted a local expert mindfulness and meditation educator to help construct a culturally appropriate, trauma-informed and inclusive mindfulness recording for someone with zero to minimal mindfulness experience. We took into consideration that practicing mindfulness is a tool, it's not a solution. The mindfulness teacher helped us realize that each person's reaction and response may vary based on their lived experiences. We utilize this knowledge while creating our intervention. South Los Angeles community members were recruited at a local health fair and a nearby medical office. A pre-survey was completed digitally via a scannable QR code or on paper in either English or Spanish. Afterwards, they listened to an audio recording of an introduction to mindfulness followed by a breathing exercise with body scan using a personal device or mp3 player. Headphones were encouraged to minimize noise and immerse participants in the calming environment. At the health fair, in order to promote privacy, confidentiality, and a relaxed atmosphere, the intervention was performed with privacy panels and curtains in an enclosed canopy tent. At the medical office, privacy was maintained by performing the intervention in the patient room. The final step was to complete a post-survey with optional verbal and written feedback. Each person was offered a custom-made community brochure, which highlighted local resources, such as safe places to exercise, mental health services covered by insurance, free anonymous therapy, complimentary meditation sessions, and application subscriptions. So here is the meditation station that we created. So there are privacy panels to separate users. 
Um, there are plants to promote a relaxing environment. Uh, we have headphones and sanitation equipment as well. So this is the lovely brochure that my classmates and I created. So this includes resources in the community that are free and available to the local residents. So for example, there is the free Headspace app subscription that's available to all Los Angeles City residents and examples of like safe parks to exercise in and uh, lots of other resources. Okay, so this is our class timeout. Kathy is going to guide you through a quick breathing session. Okay, so let's test out a brief breathing exercise with me. I want you to inhale, take a deep breath in, deeper. Okay, now I want you to think about everything that you want to let go of, all the negativity in your life. And I want you to breathe out, exhale, and let it go. Now take a moment of silence. Okay, um, please feel free to drop um, comments on the chat about how you feel and if you ever um, try any of these exercises before. Um, but now let's move on to the data. So on the screen, there are research objectives that we use to create the questions for our intervention. Uh, in total, we have 19 participants. And because of the setting of our research and also we want to follow HIPAA regulations, um, we did not collect any personal data of our participants such as race, gender, et cetera. And we do, not also, we do not want to bore you with the details of the questions and all that stuff. So um, I just want to present to you like the statistic of our data. So um, more than 60% of participants never heard about mindfulness or meditation. And 60% of them um, does not think that we have, there are enough resources about mental health in the community. Um, however, um, also, 40% never practice mindfulness or meditation, but 90% of them are willing to uh, participate in mindfulness and meditation um, practice. After the intervention, 100% uh, of our participants found that the guided meditation uh, from our expert useful, and 100% of them were willing to use the technique they learned to practice meditation in the future. Another thing uh, we want to measure is if meditation improves mood. And as you can see on this slide, um, on the left side, um, there are a wide range of emotions that participants have um, before the intervention. Happy, grateful, angry, stress, everything. But after our intervention, um, the half of the colors, or I would say emotions that they have, have gone. Most of them just feel grateful, happy, and relaxed, and only to feel unsure. So in conclusion, um, I do believe that we achieve, uh, we meet all of our objectives, goals, and uh, we, it seems like, you know, the community um, actually does not know much about meditation and um, mindfulness. However, they are willing to practice and they want to learn more about it. So mission accomplished. Stepping into Valentina's community, we wanted to humble ourselves and truly learn about the needs of her neighborhood. We are proud to bring more awareness and educate South LA on the practice of mindfulness. Although we could have expanded the intervention to include more participants and created a longer sustainable program, we were able to provide an educational pilot intervention to help address the community's mental health needs. Through this project, we learned of the perceptions of mindfulness within Valentina's community and realized that cultural beliefs and cultural sensitive aspects should somehow be incorporated towards one's daily mindfulness practice. In this community, the development of culturally responsive intervention has mostly been non-existent. We wish we could further explore approaches towards integrating mindfulness therapies that emphasizes cultural competency, religious spiritual identities, racial ethnic backgrounds, and community values and pressures to provide adapted mindfulness interventions specific to the diverse identities of Valentina's community. 100% of participants said they benefited from our intervention, and a majority saw themselves continuing the practice of mindfulness within their daily activities. Based on this positive response, we are hopeful that mind mindfulness could be a tool, even a bridge, towards accessing mental health services and improving mental well being. So, we'd like to urge our colleagues, community clinics, and other healthcare providers to, continuing, to continue furthering our efforts to educate and bring awareness of mental health resources, such as mindfulness, to communities like South LA. Let's make this a goal to not stop here.